Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building and friend to the room. Londell McMillan. Good Londell. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Source Power 30 is yes, out, man. Always yeah. controversial because yeah. everybody has their own opinions on who should have been in what slot, who didn't make it, who shouldn't have made it. So we are going to talk about that this morning. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yes, sir. Now let's talk about the Power 30. Yes, Where sir. You want to start? You start the, let's the, start with the big list. The big list. The big list. Uh, number one is QC. QC. What do you think? Um, I don't. I see that. I don't I think did. I disagree with that. No, yeah, that's, I can see that. Okay. that. okay. I don't think I, I disagree with that. With that. That's okay. fine. Well, that's good. But that's it's a little good. weird, A label, though. a like, management company. Uh, they they got the biggest artists. But the weird is listing me because it goes QC, then it goes YouTube Music, then it goes Drake, then it goes J, Diddy, and I think Spotify. Like, it's kind of... <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting to see artists bigger than the platforms that they're on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, it's it's because it's a it's a culture list. Mm-hmm. It's what impacts uh, the culture, the power within the culture, and how how strong and powerful would the platform be without the artists and the creative true, content? True. True. Right. And so you see a lot of people now trying to get in the tech game. They're repositioning themselves. They before were in the music game, and now they want to be tech entrepreneurs. But they have to bring artists and they have to bring creative and talent through the process. Mm-hmm. So, so we think you know for this particular hip hop culture, um, Drake is number three. Now, how uh, did over Spotify? How did Jay Z and Diddy feel about being after Drake for this year? Uh, I'm not sure. They didn't call me and let me know. But I can tell you this: you know, overall, they Drake wouldn't be ahead of them overall. overall but in but this, this given this year, year, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you I think, think so? it's, with Jay, all the stuff that he's done for Title and, and creating shows and his album, his album with and Beyonce the tour and Drake number this year combined over to Title over Title, you know, uh, Drake, Drake, Drake. Mm, Drake. <laughs> This year, I mean, if you if you're anywhere near a millennial, <clears throat> you can't you can't mention Drake and Jay Z in the same conversation. But it's more about millennial talk, though. Yeah, I mean, this they'll argue you down. Talk. I was gonna say the metrics. I don't know what the metrics are because, like, you know, like like we said, Jay has his hand in so many different things, but Drake does move culture in a way that we've never seen before. So this year, but yeah. if you're talking about overall power, I don't think you can put Drake in the same conversation as Jay because Jay's obviously way more powerful overall. And yeah. title is not something that just happened this year. Mm-hmm. Title's been something that's been going on for several years. Gotcha. And, and it's still struggling to actually actually make it happen. Now uh, if we the... really if we're really being honest about it. What you do you know, mean struggling? Meaning their their numbers don't compete anywhere near with Spotify and uh Apple. Uh, and iTunes in terms of the subscriptions. A lot of those, uh, are those numbers, a lot of them inflated? I, I've heard that they said a lot of those numbers were inflated sometimes. I think everything in the entertainment and business is inflated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People come up here and I just see point. all of these people saying what they're doing and how they're doing it. They're all inflated. They're one big PR hype. You know, I heard some of the guests up here this morning and I was like, wow. <laughs> Wow. Who, who in particular are you? Who are you to Steve Stout? Oh. So it was Steve it's Stout. It's good to see that Steve Stout has finally, after 20 years, come to our side of, of artists and ownership and masters before they were the master's man. Mm. Before they were I the master's man. Yeah, I asked them that. I said, and you... now all of a sudden they want to mm-hmm. unite the masters of the artists. That's stuff that I've been saying for 20 years. What, so what do you think about major labels and what Steve Stout has to say? Because labels will tell you that they do help artists as far as putting together a whole team, marketing, promotions, getting them to a certain point. Like with Cardi B, be Cardi B, where without she is Atlantic, right now, yeah. without having signed to Atlantic, if she would have signed to United Masters. Well, I think you know. Oh, masters, you, what is it? I think I think you I think yeah, you know for over twenty years, Prince and I were out front talking about own your masters. Mm-hmm. I met him when he had slave on his face. We were the first to go up on on the internet that was major and sell directly to the consumer. But there is a role for labels. In fact, if you look at the Power Thirty list this year, you'll see a number of the labels yes. um, high up on the list because mm-hmm. they made they made a transition. They realized that their strength is not through distribution because that's that's digital technology. But they bring marketing expertise. They bring promotion expertise. They they bring a whole kind of history of how to how to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So there's a role for that. There's a role for that. But now all of a sudden, the people who were the, I would say, overseers of that system are now moving out and trying to create new systems. And I think it's just quite interesting and full of hype. 
you know. So I just look at you it and I go, it. wow. I look at it and say, wow, really? <laughs> well, I mean, I asked Steve that exact same question. I'm like, yo, you benefited off this same system for years. It's like, do you think he could event- you could see the light and start trying to treat artists the way they should be treated? I mean, the conversations of some of these same people flip-flop. Mm. Mm when it's time for them to make investments or make moves. Mm. And so that's why with respect to, you know, power, you know, power, money, and respect, they're not all the same. People try to attain them, but money, power, and respect is different. I can recognize you have power, but don't respect you because your values are just a little flip floppy to me. Mm. You know, you're not consistent. Is that how you look at Steve Stout? Well, I don't want to put Steve directly in the mix because I mean, Steve. Him. No, no, I'm just talking about how things he heard him change. This morning. I actually do respect Steve, but I understand is I understand that he's a he's a marketer. He's number 28 on the list, by the way. He's on the list. Yeah, we yeah, put yeah. him on the list because you have to respect his hustle. But I'm not sure that we have the same values. What in values, fact, I know we don't. What values don't you think he has? <laughs> Well, I'm and the only reason I'm asking because Steve is, is, is somebody that's very influential in the industry, and I'm just asking. Steve is influential in the industry. I actually remember when I told him first start reading the Wall Street Journal when he was running around there with a kid in play. You know, I might look a little younger than <laughs> him, but I'm 52. <laughs> I'm 52, so All I right. go way back. Mm-hmm. I go way back when I introduced Leo Cohen to Doug Morris when he was still in Varick Va- Street. You know, so when certain people in the culture who are the leaders in the culture used to sit in my law office lobby waiting for Prince tickets, and now they're the leaders of the culture. So I go way back. I've seen a lot. You know this, Envy. I remember when you were coming up. Mm-hmm. And I'm so proud of everybody. I'm so proud of everybody how they're going. But, you know, I chose to reinvent myself in a different way because I believe that we have to stop just being part of the process of the pimping. Mm. And now because of social movements and marketing like Black Lives Matter and other things, which I believe came after I helped Beverly Bond with Black Girls Rock, those ladies got that rhythm of the Black Girls Rock, Black Lives Matter, shout out to Beverly Bond. It became a social marketing movement. And now the conversation of Black Power is easy to have a conversation. People are okay with having a conversation. But... What about putting in the work in owning black businesses? Right. What about putting in the work in owning distribution, Mm -hmm. sales? I mean, putting in the work, not just being the sauce. Didn't Prince own a distribution label? Yeah, we distributed Mm -hmm. directly. Mm -hmm. When we say label, we made the calls. You got to put in the calls. You can't be mad at... Those in industry, whether they're white, purple, green, when they're putting in the work, and they're mad because you're giving them all the sauce. Mm -hmm. You can't be mad. And then with that said, there are a lot of allies, regardless of the color. There are a lot of allies who are white. And just because you're black don't mean that you're you're someone that we need to be supporting. Absolutely. You can be a culture vulture and be black. You'll be a culture vulture. You'll be manipulated (laughs) by the culture. You know, this is not new. There were people in the house going way, way back. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's a continuum. Absolutely. Landell, you have a daughter who's an artist. Would you want her to sign to a major label? Wow, shout out to Kylie and Monty. Um, Not now. Uh, and by the way, I'm not against labels. Mm-hmm. I'm against bad business and bad systems because the contract is what you negotiate and how you put it together. Um, but she's an artist and we're doing it independently because I don't want a lot of the industry label um, stuff to infect her as a young lady. I want her to be healthy. And so when she gets older and she can make that decision, I'll have to defer to her. But I wouldn't object to a joint venture or a partnership where you have control. Do you try to not bring her with you places so you're not giving that stamp so she does, people don't affiliate you guys with each other? Kind of, sort of. Mm-hmm. I think she should make her own name, but she's doing really, really well. Her music is doing really, really well as a, you know, 15, 16, 17-year-old girl. Um, And I think that I come with a lot of baggage, both (laughs) good and bad. Mm -hmm. And when you represent people for justice, people are not going to always be happy with you, you know. Um, And I'm a truth teller, at least as I see the truth. I don't manipulate and change up. You know, I'm not going to you know, write a book one year, five years later, 
come out with a business that's almost completely contradictory to what I just said. You're right. throwing a lot of shots the, at Stout. The tanning morning. of America? <laughs> 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 well, well he said that though. He also said that too. He said he feel like he started <laughs> that change five years ago with his book. That's what he said. You know, I just think I think a lot of it is just quite frankly, you know, buffoonery. Mm. You know, and I don't respect it. You know, and then, you know, we start a whole movement about ownership and freedom. We go talk talk to Master P. We go talk to Cash Money. Everybody calls us rebels, ridiculous. You know, my man writes slave on his face. We get him out of all of that, change the whole business model. And then when he's dead, you give credit to the dead man and you don't give credit to the movement that actually started what we're doing. But I get it. I get it. We did that in music. Now I'm coming for media. Now, now, look, you, uh, now I'm coming for media. Media is much harder. And that's why when people talk about what's up with the source, <laughs> We're building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's hard owning and building media. You don't think it's easier in this era? Because I feel like we have media in our hand all the time. Like, I mean, even if I look at your digital list, you know, you got my man Academics at number 12. Academics isn't, wasn't before Complex. He wasn't tied to no <clears throat> major entity. And look look at the voice he became. I love it. It's easier on their platform. Mm. You on their, he's on their platform. Gotcha. He doesn't own the beams, the plumbing. The electricity. No, I'm saying before, I got what you're saying. All right, I okay. get what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah, good yeah. to be the source. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got you could be saying. in yeah, media yeah, yeah. versus own media. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't own YouTube. You don't own, you don't yeah, own yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram. You, you, they change the algorithms, your numbers are dead. Yeah, yeah what about right. the... <laughs> no, that's a good point. No, that's a good... <laughs> they change the algorithms. That's a good point. They change the algorithms and your numbers die. You know, you cannot hire interns when you choose to or want to. Shout out to all the interns and in, in the world. Now, you know, radio, you put us number one on radio. Yeah, I didn't put you number one. You put yourself number one. Let's give a shout for hey. that. Hey. Yeah. How many years you know, in a row is that? Yeah, that's five. Now let's talk why. Why, why is the Breakfast Club number one? <laughs> well, again, you know, we look, at, we look at the stats. <laughs> Stupid. We, we, look at, we look at tech and taste. We mm-hmm. look at the technology of it as the numbers. The, al- the numbers speak for themselves, right? You guys, you know, we look at Nielsen, you guys in 90 markets, doing over four plus million, you know, weekly, you know, your numbers are just through the roof. You got platforms and partners all over the place because your demand is so high. People want to be in business with the Breakfast Club. But, you know, from a taste standpoint, you know, quite frankly, you know, I love all of you, but I was kind of rooting for someone else to be number oh, one. Damn, you know? I mean, only because I want to bring a certain objectivity. But when y'all were number one again, it was like we push I ourselves. To, we push ourselves to be better every year. I, I was like, you know, I was gonna take take each of you to dinner and say, you know, you know, we we good, <laughs> but y'all didn't make number one this year. It didn't happen that That's way. That's fine. I mean, listen, I feel you like you guys raised the bar, man. Yeah. You raised the bar. You know, I'm sitting here, like, come on, man. I'm sitting here, and I was, I was, I was happy to wait for an hour because. Where else do you go and you get two chains and Bernie Sanders on the same day? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. You guys raise the bar from the music and the culture. You talk about it with respect. You guys are knowledgeable. You guys uh, also can be comedic, um, controversial, but not just for controversy. Uh, raising the bar, social issues, political, civic issues. I mean, really, you guys personify what the essence of the source was 20 years ago. When it came out of Harvard, you know, and these people said that we got to rep the culture and also add social, political, civic um, content that inspires a community. You guys really do that. And Mm -hmm. so now you see other stations and podcasts dealing with civic issues and having uh, political people come up to their shows and and you you guys don't hold back. You know, I watch y'all expressions. Y'all weren't smiling and jiggy-booing when Senator Sanders was in the room. Y'all weren't acting like you're just so happy that the famous white man was here Mm -hmm. in in, in your presence. You guys treated him with respect, and you guys actually engaged. And that's what I respect. Be true. Be true to yourself and true to the culture. I think that, um, you know, to your point, you know, you, you, you know, black radio used to mean that. Black radio used to be that. Back then, in the it, day. then it fell off for a yeah. while. So I feel like I, I just we want to bring back that feeling of just black radio and just you know being the totality of a black man. Like we we do everything. Hip hop is a broad culture and it's always been a broad culture. 
and the thing I love is you guys you guys understand the fusion between black culture and hip hop culture because hip hop you know there's an intersectionality but hip hop is broader than just black culture mm -hmm. but don't leave it out mm -hmm. you have to respect it mm -hmm. and i think for for too long we don't get the respect we deserve right. and i think for too long we have people who put themselves out as owners but they're not operators they are like marketing partners mm -hmm for small percentages. And you're not an operator, you don't run shit. We have to start running our communities right. and partnering with allies, I don't care what color. There are many white people and have always been great white people and great allies. But unfortunately, most of them are not. So we just have to find the right allies. And we, I, have, I and we have to support each other, too. And I, I want to take this time to say, Landau, always is supportive. Like, if he sees something I'm doing, like I launched my drinkfreshjuice.com business, and he definitely hit me up and was like, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Because sometimes we're also scared to ask people for help. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we feel like, well, I have to do this by myself. I don't want to ask anybody. No one wants to help me. But sometimes we do have to reach out. But it's nice that you see what people have going on, like Beverly Bond with Black Girls Rock, and you all take the initiative to say, hey, let me know what I can do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, real story, Beverly Bond and I, you know, we had some issues where we had disagreement at some point. But that's my sister. I came to help her. That was her brand and what she was about. You have to eat your disagreements and work together for the betterment of the culture. And she's an amazing person. You don't always agree with everybody. But when we're out, it's on nothing but love. But then there are people who are adversaries. There are people who are enemies of the state. There are people that are enemies of the culture. And then if you look at the track record of our so-called you know, leaders or the people who we think are the most powerful, you know, they'll on one year act as if everything, they're allies, and then all of a sudden when they don't get what they want, then they start trying to trash them. Be consistent. Be consistent. I think, I think one thing I would say with each member of the Breakfast Club is that's what we push to do. And not only do it for ourselves, but we try to teach our community, whether it's Charlemagne teaching about TV and how to EP and some of his stuff in his book with mental health and some of that, and Angela Yee with her juice bars and me with the real estate. I think, you know, we figured out that's the most important thing to create that so other people don't fall in our pitfalls and make the mistakes that we made and try to benefit right. so they can start from the beginning. Because I wish some of the knowledge that I had now, I had at 21, I had at 22, I had at 16. And that's what we're trying to teach these individuals. Yeah, I think we teach, this generation is teaching the own, and our generation was taught to work. Correct. You know, I think it's a difference. 100%. Can we talk about this list though and, and who's on it and let's talk about the other slides because yes, we're number one. You're number one. Um, so let's go through some of these choices that you guys okay. made <laughs> on this list. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's Angie get controversial. Huh? Angie should have been higher. Angie should have been higher. Been higher. <laughs> let's, been higher. Let, let's fight. Let's fight over it. Let's <laughs> Angie was number 12 on the list. Now, are you saying Angie should have been higher? Not because she's a legend Because icon, she's iconic. Because her year. And she's a, a beautiful year. person. She had a good year. She had a great year. J. Cole interview was mm -hmm. great. Like, Angie should have been top five. Uh, Top five. Safari, hosting hosting on television. One that was everywhere with him crying. Mm -hmm. Takashi, she was on TV. She did The Mace. She did a lot this year. Yeah. And so, where did my staff. She was number 12. Staff, number 12. She was number 12. So from five to 12. So she's still up in the top half of the list. <laughs> she's in the top half. Mm -hmm. The other thing has to, what has to also be considered, and I say this every year, is we have to show regional diversity. So if someone gets off of a plane in a city, in a major market, who are they coming to see first? That gets a big point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a weighted average. Who are they coming to see first? Now, Angie is one of the people they may come to see, no doubt. Absolutely. I'm not I'm not saying she's not like a, a top tier. In fact, they, they come in the Breakfast Club. And I'm not, so I, say, I say that humbly, okay, you know okay. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. I've seen artists get on private jets Fly in just to come do the show and fly back out. Salute to Twenty One Savage. Shout to Twenty One Savage. Yes. He's done that. Right, and and you know you 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 can't you can't take anything away. from I think Didi in the morning should have been higher too. Didi in the morning should have been way. They're syndicated higher. now. Shout that's to Didi. Shout to Michael Shaw. Yeah, absolutely. Salute to my guy uh, George Cook. But that's a George. That's what's a good up, show. George? I feel like uh, Leon, Kendra, and Kyle should have been just a little bit higher. They had number ten, but I think Didi them should have been in the top ten as well. Morning mm -hmm. shows are back in a big yeah, I way. I think Didi should be mm -hmm. top ten. Mm -hmm. Kendra and them top 10. I think Bootleg, Kev, and Head should have been together. Are these your friends? 
no, I mean, they these, are, but but these okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, asking, asking, are these like, your friends? But you know what? They're not my friends. I don't have their their, no, their their numbers in my phone. But these are shows that I listen to when I touch their city or I listen to their interviews. Okay, you know, so if I'm listening to the interviews, I I feel like a lot of people are. Yeah, and Boule Kevin had at Real ninety two three in L A. Like they've opened up the digital market in L A. in a different way. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like I watch a lot of their stuff. Yeah, they have been online. doing a great job. Yeah. I feel like next year they're gonna be up even higher. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Well, but I mean, we, not... we at least acknowledge them, though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. and the thing I love about this list is to not only acknowledge them, but also to to set the beginning for I think um, a DJ and radio personality movement, and that's what we wish to do and aim to do. Um, this is a talent base. Obviously, you guys have figured out how to exploit it, and you're in a market where opportunities exist. But this is a talent base where a lot of them are not in major markets, and they're just extremely talented. And we want to we want to put them together and figure out how we can create ownership opportunities and business opportunities beyond uh, what they do and how they serve their media, um, because you can do both. Yeah. So when we start talking about ownership, I'm not saying everybody <laughs> leave their day job no, right, or right. leave their main job. And so I'm talking to the to your audience. Do both. Leverage both until you're in a position to have your own business. Or use the platform you have to build your own businesses. Or use the platform you have to build your own business. And not everybody's built for being a business owner. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, sometimes it's great to be part of a group that's being owned in the way you are and being a valuable member or an indispensable member. That's why I tell everyone, well, you own your own, I want to own my own. I said, that's great. But be in a position where you can own your own and be successful or learn and contribute to something, um, or get stock options. That's another thing I want to share and tell <clears throat> people. I want people to know that if you're working for a company and you're bringing value and you feel um, that you are not being uh, respected or or you feel that you're not getting what you deserve, approach ownership and say, look, I'm bringing value and be specific about the value. And then say, you know, I would like to talk to you about a, a stock option plan. How can I become a beneficiary of the growth that I'm delivering for your company and for your business? I'm not asking you to give me equity out the gate, but I am asking you to recognize what I contribute. And if I give you sweat equity and we grow and I hit certain metrics, then I feel I should deserve a piece of the pot. So that's something I wanted to share with people. You know, you don't have to always invest your money and have everything. You can sometimes say, I've invested my time. I bring tremendous value. I want to be compensated beyond just the day-to-day check because you know you can be terminated at any time in most jobs. And I like to have a stock option uh, participation. Now you know you, you asked you know what what makes us work hard and, and why. Honestly, for myself, I speak for myself. I don't know if this could happen, but I want to be on all three lists. That's just me personally. I mm-hmm. want to make it so, and I don't have to be number one on all three lists, but I want to make it so I'm I'm recognized as the Power 30, the original, the radio DJs, and the digital. Mm-hmm. That That's what, when I think of the source in these lists, that's what really pushes me to work hard. Right. So until until I see myself on those three lists, we're going to keep busting your ass. You well, know, keep busting. I love it. I love it. I like to get busted. The digital pause. list is interesting because I don't think media personality should be on the digital list. I think that, <clears throat> and it's going to have to come to a point where we, you have to have to create a podcast list, even if it's just the top ten. Like I don't think Joe Budden, academics, drink champs should necessarily be on the digital list. You know what I mean? I feel like that's just a that's different a form of media. I think podcast should have its own thing. Well, the reason why it's on digital is because it's distributed to a digital platform. Mm-hmm. And so um, we have contemplated a separate podcast list, and you know, you make, you make a fair point. Um, and so perhaps it'll evolve into that because podcasts are becoming so prominent, mm-hmm. um, and it may be ni- nice to have a separate uh, area for that. Um, and so point well taken. But, but Envy, back to your point. You know, one thing I wanted to say about you, you know, and all of your um, talents and your business exploits, you know, one thing that I think I take from you that I think the culture receives and the thing that you promote is that you're an, you're an exemplary family man. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, the way you go about, you know, your family, uh, you know, exposure and how you and your wife 
partner and and do what you do and you share that you know that's that's a beautiful thing Absolutely. and that's great for the culture and it's it's something that is missing and has been missing and others have done it you know Jay-Z and Beyonce are great for that in that respect um Gucci and his wife are great for that but you're great for that and I just wanted to thank you for that because it's, it's so important um it must not be easy you know, giving that amount of attention and energy, uh, even though the love probably makes it, it, it easier it, it than it is. It is easy because it's, it's real. I mean, mm -hmm. we go through trials and tribulations of everybody else. That's and we, what and I we meant. talk about it, and we talk about it on our podcast. We talk about it up here, but it's That's real. And I think yeah. growing up, you never seen that. And I think, you know, growing up, I don't know if, if Charlemagne would say the same, but yeah, back in the day, we were raised to, to, to be a player, and marriage was kind of shunned on. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Just just from watching videos and seeing live and people used to hide being Shit, married. Seeing my daddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and that's how we were raised at first. You know, it wasn't cool, but then you realize, and, and Charlamagne would attest that, you know, my life has been way better ever since that me and my wife has been more spiritual, you know, talk about everything that's going on and just been so real and working out everything that we had to work out. My life has been blessed ever since. Like, right. and it ain't. And I'm, when I say blessed, I'm not talking money. I'm not talking finance. I'm just talking everything. It's just been blessed. So, it's like I will continue to push that. I will continue to push everything else that I'm doing, whether it's investments, mm -hmm. whether pushing people to buy properties and pushing people mm -hmm. to buy homes, pushing people to in, invest in in health with Juice Ball with me and Ye. Like that's what I want to push because we pushed so much bullshit before. Right. You know. So the fact that we actually own the shit that we're talking about. It's amazing to me. Well, salute to you and Charlemagne. Charlemagne, you're, you're another family man. You know, I, I I just see how you how you brothers move in the culture, and it, it's great. It's really great. I mean, and you know, I don't know if we could find anything more important than talking about building solid families mm -hmm. and health, our health. All right. You know, uh, and mental how and we, physical, mental and physical, and yeah, obviously what we eat and what we drink uh, relates to that. And so, you know, again, to Angela, you know, you're, you're, you're an inspiration. You know, you're, you're an inspiration to me, let alone, you know, a lot of times women, people always say, you're an inspiration to the young lady. You're an inspiration to the whole culture, you know, for what you do, how you do it, being entrepreneurial, how you put together your networks. And, you know, I've seen you in action. I've seen you work with people. I see people who want to work with you, you know. And that that's that's a measure of power also. Do people want to work with you and do you bring value to the situations that you're involved? Yeah, yeah this year I think so far has been great. Like, you know, I've been, I'm an ambassador for the Barclays. Yes, yes, yes. For yes, Brooklyn's yes. BSA, uh, Brooklyn Sports and Entertainment, working with the Nets and everything they have going on there and the New York Public Library. Yeah. Being an ambassador for that. And for both of those positions, it's the first time they've ever even had an ambassador. So it has been amazing, and you're right, it is great when people come to you and want to work with you on what they have going on and feel that you bring value to what they have and uh, you can help with the, what they have elevated to the next level. So yeah, 100%. That's been amazing. I do want to shift gears for a second Yeah. and talk about Michael Jackson. Yes. Because I know you have a lot more information than the average person would about Michael Jackson, and this whole Leaving Neverland documentary is coming on HBO, uh, so I want to know your thoughts on that. Well, uh, obviously, Michael Jackson was very close to me. Uh, I represented him about five years, five five years before he passed away, um, and I didn't represent him as much. I was one of his lawyers the last two years when he went to California, um, and um, Michael had asked me to be his manager, but because I was so involved with so many different people, um, and that's not really what I do. Um, I chose not to, and I wrestle all the time with whether or not I should have done that to try and protect him from all of the vultures and all of the rumors and all of the 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 things, and from himself, because he had a big, big heart. You know, I think sometimes people, when they become so popular and powerful, they're not people around them that just keep it keep it real and keep it honest, but keep it loving and say, hey, we're not doing that. That's not going to play out well. Um, and obviously, I think he was a victim of that. Um, <clears throat> the people around many celebrities um, sometimes fall short for standing up and saying, we're not doing that. But the 
The concern I have about this particular documentary is what has the estate and the people, what have they done to prevent it? I'm not sure. I haven't studied it, but I have not seen any efforts to seek an injunction, a legal injunction. I think they tried. I think it's they actually tried to sue HBO for <laughs> But I haven't heard for an injunction. I haven't heard them ask But an injunction, injunction is, is, is an action that's filed to cease and desist something from going forward when there's a legal basis to do so and prevent it from coming out. Isn't perjury a legal basis? Because what they, the guy said under oath, Michael didn't do anything to him. Um, yeah, he said that in the criminal yeah. case. Mm -hmm. um, perjury, I don't believe, is, is, a, is a basis because you can sue after mm -hmm. that happens and we haven't actually seen what he's going to say on the documentary. Yeah, he could say, I lied when I took the stand. <clears throat> and yes, I did commit perjury, but now I want to tell the truth. He could say, you know, he could, if he if he does that, then he's got criminal issues. Yes. He's got to deal but with. But he might not care. He, he may might, not care. Right. But that's not a cause for an injunction, I would think. But I I want to see the effort. I want to see the effort. And you know, I say this the same with the estate of people who who represent Michael, because I was involved with that when I was representing his mother, and we had his mother in the position until his family messed that up. Um, I say that thing with same thing with Prince's estate. You know, what do the, because when you say estate, I want the, I want your audience to know the estate does not mean family. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that. It's in many control. cases, the estate, are uh, who's in control? And in both of those cases now, the families are not in control. Mm, so it's lawyers. and So it's often yeah. lawyers and so-called um, administrators, people who were put in. I mean, and so often the courts are directing who's put in. And when you're dealing with big, big money, I'm talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, you have a heavy legal process that's involved, and you have a lot of people coming into the family confusing the family. And when they divide the family, they conquer the estate. And so many people of these estates are not in control, such as in the Prince estate right now, such as in the Michael Jackson estate right now um and in michael jackson's case there was a will that was in a lawyer's um so-called files that that lawyer never sent to michael after michael separated from that lawyer okay so it was it was something that the family at least the mother and the father god rest his soul were not initially cool with and in prince's case he thought he was gonna live forever and he didn't want anybody talking to him about death Right. And so now it goes to what you call probate. So these are things that we learn over time, just like you were saying, you know, the generation prior taught us to get a job. Mm -hmm. And now we're talking ownership. These are business matters right. that deal with wealth and economics. And very few of us have dealt with it on a very high level. Mm -hmm. And we keep getting tricked, not by the enemies of the estate of the state, but also these tricksters. That, that come in and position themselves as if they're they're one of us. Right. Right. So we have to be a lot more clear and a lot more critical of what people are saying and um, make wise decisions. Do you plan to watch the documentary? And you know, I Oprah, do. Oprah is hosting the after, uh, after the Neverland. I do intend to watch it because if it's something that I think is completely over the pale, I'm going to find a way to do something. I have to. I, I, I think it's unethical. I mean, I just think it's unethical because, you know, both of those guys said under oath nothing happened. If it was some new people that was coming out speaking against Michael, cool. I don't see how we can look at the, their words with any with any integrity. I guess we got to see. I guess we got to see. Well, the but the if day. they did say it, though, if they said it one day, you know, and then they're not changing it or, you know, we but, do have to see, but it's... Yeah, but I, I do also feel like we don't know that because we also don't know as a vic if you are an alleged victim of abuse... I don't know how somebody might act if they feel like they've been manipulated, if they feel like, you know, they were really close to somebody that took advantage of that. And then during the course, and I'm not saying this is what happened in their case, but I would think that people who are victims of sexual abuse may come out and be in denial of that and also protect their abuser. And who knows? But what if they're lying? I'm, uh, that's Michael's not here to defend And that's himself. possible too. But right. I'm, you know saying, I'm like, saying I don't only solely place that on, well, they lied and they committed perjury if they're saying this did happen. I do believe that there are people who would do that because people do tend to want to protect, in certain cases, their abusers. And studies have shown that. 
So I don't know if I could alone just say that. Well, I just raised a question on how and why, and because Michael's not here to defend himself, you know, how we should look at this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost 10 years now. This is the 10th year anniversary of his passing. Um, he passed away in June 2009. Um, and would they do that for to Presley, Elvis Presley? Of course not. They would should. they do that to Marlon Brando? No. These guys like that. Um, Yo, I had and, an agent. I had an agent mm -hmm. ask me verbatim. Mm. He's like, you know, Charlemagne, what kind of show could we do in the surviving R. Kelly vein? Like, like who's out there? Like, you know, HBO's got Michael Jackson. I said Elvis, Woody Allen, Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> Roman Polanski. He was like, what happened with Elvis? It com acted completely clueless. Completely, completely clueless. clueless. Right, right. You know, they don't want to do that. Yeah, that's that's what history does, and mm -hmm. and that's why it's important. Again, you know, and it's not a plug just for the source. That's why it's important for having ownership and control of media, because it's great when allies um, like this company allows a show like The Breakfast Club to to keep it real, but many don't, mm -hmm. and they're still in control of that. That's why y'all are wise for putting y'all enterprises in play Absolutely. and building your voice because if they ever uh, at some point talent becomes an equilibrium to the platform when you've got that kind of reach and so if anything happens you guys got alternative <laughs> options right. but at the same time they do own the platform and very few allow this kind of honest dis discourse to take place mm -hmm. and that's why it's been very 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 important for me to jump off of the tower of top lawyers in in the music industry and jump into this media space, and I do other things, but jump into this media space to figure out figure it out. How is it going? Where is it going? Uh, and everyone thinks you know they're going to jump on this platform, that platform, all of these different tech um, distribution platforms, and those are great. It'll get your word out, and you can make money. It's great, but again, when you don't own the platform or co-own the platform, you can become a victim of their decisions to change it. Very true. And you can count the you can count the people who own their media platforms on one hand. Right. And that's real talk. And a lot of people have tried. I mean, even the powerful ones have tried. You know, the most powerful people in the industry have tried, and they see that it's difficult. And then selling advertising is a whole nother game, mm -hmm. right? And so you'll you'll see that. Well, Why we, is uh, YouTube Music number two? Oh, YouTube Music, I think, is number two because every artist, yeah, every cult, YouTube. Every, YouTube is everybody such a huge that platform. chooses to get their music out or to be seen uses YouTube. And then also, YouTube Music, um, just they just started a new uh, thing with YouTube Music. They also brought over um, someone who was very prominent in Spotify over to their platform. Tuma. Tuma Basa. Yeah. And um, Leo used to, again, he used to be a client of mine at Def Jam, and now he's over there. And. Um, you know, it was interesting with 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 uh, Lior's what he's doing, all the stuff he's doing, and and then it was interesting with what Dame Dash did. You know, when he apologized, when, yeah, when he apologized, and yeah, you know, so it's just a lot of weird things happening <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <a lot laughs> in the culture. <laughs> <laughs> the source is out right now. Power thirty issue. And Make oh, last thing I wanted to ask you was about your guy Spike Lee too. Spike winning his Congrats Oscar. Spike, oh yeah, Spike. Yes. Yeah, let's give Spike a big shout Absolutely. out. Yes. <laughs> Spike, What's happening, Spike? You know, one thing I love about Spike is that he, again, he's not gonna flip flop on values. You know, you may or may not love everything that he does. I love the fact that Jordan Pill gave him the initial idea, so that was kind of collaboration. I love the fact he had purple on and had Prince's symbol. He's always representing the culture. He's always putting people on. I mean, we go back all of the major artists and people that he's put out. Mm -hmm. So I, w I was very, very thrilled to have had a relationship and work for Spike as a lawyer and associate producer on his films, uh, soundtracks. And so I was very, very happy with him. But the last thing I want to say before I close out is that I'm excited. We're working on three documentaries. Ooh, okay. One documentary is going to be obviously on the source, mm -hmm. finally. And, wow, and that's going to be amazing. I was just in L.A. Um, for a major documentary and a feature film conversations. Um, looking forward to getting back with all of the people who helped start the brand. That's going to be amazing. Um, yeah, and bring that forward. So we're excited about that. We're also excited about doing our documentary with Prince mm -hmm. uh, on emancipation. Ooh. There's one that the estate made with... Um, Ava DuVernay and Netflix, and that should be great. Yeah. But also, you know, we also have a story to tell that's not a music story. We have a story to tell that's about a, a man who was an artist 
who was also about empowering uh, not just his people, but the world with the truth as he saw it and was courageous enough in his five foot body mm -hmm. to take on the system and fight the power. Um, and so we're very, very excited about the things that we're working on. And what about Source 360? When is that going to be this year? Do Three, we know? 360 this year is going to go to four markets this year. They're all going to come in August, September, and October. We're expanding out of New York um, uh, and into Atlanta, Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, as well as New York. We're going to do okay. New York. So we may, we may move it from Brooklyn this year because we've been there five years mm -hmm. and take it to Harlem. The people in Harlem Week are very, very interested in it, and they have over 70,000 people that comes out there and I think it's important for us to kind of support what's happening in Harlem and so we're excited about all those things and again we'll keep you all posted and keep you guys in the loop with everything that we're doing and again continue to do great work continue Thank you, to sir. be your allies and um, you make it. sure you get the power 30 last thing I want to say about quality control man they're on our cover for a reason they're on our cover for a reason because they just they're just killing it they and deserve they, it and they work together and they work together, and that's the key. They work together. All right. Well, it's Lyndell McMillan. It's All the right. Breakfast Club. Good morning.